Ladies and gentlemen, the conference will begin shortly. Please have a nice seat and make sure to mute your microphone. Before I open and start the conference, I would like to read the rules of the notification. So please listen carefully. First, please join Zoom 15 minutes before the event start. Second, participants are expected to turn off the sound mute during the conference process. Third, all participants who take part in the conference talk to them can ask questions by raise your hand or type question, then proceed with writing the name, origin of the agency, and question briefly. The moderator will ask the speaker a number of questions because the time for discussion is limited. And the last is certificate will be distributed to participants who took part in the event and present the manuscript. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor for me to become your master of ceremony. My name is Gianni Gali Saputri. Your Excellency, Professor Ahmad Junus, as a Vice Rector of Academic Affairs, Universitas Sebelas Maret, Surakarta, Indonesia. To the Honorable Professor Sulistio Saputro, as a Chairman of this conference. To the Honorable Dr. Mardiana, as Dean of Teacher Training and Education Faculty, Universitas Sebelas Maret, as well. Professor Subiantoro as Vice Dean of the Academic Field, Dr. Dewi Kusumawardani as Vice Dean of Finance and General Affairs, Dr. Jono as Vice Dean of Student and Alumni Field, and also the Honorable our guest speakers, Professor Chun Yan Chang from Director of Sciences Education Center, National Taiwan Normal University, Taiwan. Associate Professor Mahai Won, from School of Education, Faculty of Humanities, Curitin University, Perth, Western Australia. Professor Stephen Gumba, Senior Scientist at INRIA, France. And also Professor Sajidan from Science Education, Universitas Blas Marat, Indonesia. And to our beloved audience, welcome to the second International Conference on Science Education and Technology 2020. It is an honor for us to welcome all of you to this conference. We appreciate you taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. We hope this conference to be fruitful and engaging to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we enter the main event, please join the Legion, our Indonesian national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Please have a nice day.
tayo Thank you. Let's continue to the next agenda. To begin this conference, we are pleased to invite Professor Sulistio Saputro as the chairman of this conference to deliver the welcoming speech. Please welcome Professor Sulistio Saputro. Professor Sulistio. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are very pleased to welcome you in this international conference held by the doctorate program of science education, faculty of teacher training and education, Universitas Blasmar. Today, we are proud to be able to host it here by Zoom meeting but I hope that this online conference will give you nothing less meaning. This is the first World International Conference history in our second program, which is completely conducted on a digital platform in line with the social distancing norm due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you who generously helped us make this event together to become a success. This uh, relates to Vice Director for Academic Affairs, Professor Ahmad Yunus, our Dean, Dr. Martiana, and our distinguished participant which I am proud of, we couldn't have done it without you. In today's conference, I would like to focus on our conference development, which is today's conference is our The first item of the conference is our team. At the same about facing industrial revolution 4.0, is enhancing research and collaboration in science, education, and technology. The first one, the Sintetics Conference, would be held offline as usual. But this pandemic situation changed everything. It is not a regret anymore since this online conference is supporting our game even more, the digital era. And yet, we are making our progress on digital era conference. Thank you very much for listening and let us welcome our distinguished speakers, Professor Chun Yen Chang from NTNU Taiwan, Professor Sachidan from Universitas Blasmar, Associate Professor Mihye Woon from Curtin University, Australia, and Professor Stephen Grumba. However, due to this healthy condition, 
He sent Dr. Wisnu Uriawan from Insa Lion, France. And I hope this conference will be value adding to all highly educated, contribute to existing knowledge, pragmatic, memorable, and not to be missed. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Sulistio Saputra, for the welcoming speech. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, it's now my duty pleasure to invite the rector of Vice Rector of Universitas Blas Manet, Professor Ahmad Junus, to deliver the welcoming speech and to open the conference officially. Please welcome Professor Ahmad Junus. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished Vice Rector for Planning and Cooperation, Professor Sajidan, distinguished the Dean, Faculty of Education and Teacher Training, and also Vice Dean of Faculty of Education and Teacher Training, Professor Selamat Subiantoko, Dr. Dewi, and Dr. Jono. And all of the committee of this conference. I am delighted to welcome you today for this important occasion. Before I go any further, I would like to thank the doctorate program of science education for all the effort in organizing what I am sure will be a fantastic annual conference. Most importantly, I want to extend warm welcome to all of our distinguished speaker on behalf of the Universitas Blas Maret. Professor Chun Yen Chang from National Taiwan <coughs> Normal University, Professor Renat Sajidan, the Vice Rector for Planning and Cooperation, Faculty of Education and Teacher Training, Universitas Bas Maret, Associate Professor uh, Mie Hun from Curtin University, Australia, Professor Stephen Grumbach, a senior scientist in India, friend. It is a great honor you can share your time with in this conference. It is gratifying to look around and see so many families face. That's a pleasing welcome to what I know is going to create conference. Many of you have made a hard effort to join us today. On behalf of us, I am deeply appreciate and offer you our most grateful welcome. Nowadays, university must still, of course, pursue knowledge for its own sake and create a stimulating intellectual environment for students, but they must do a whole lot more to act as foreign grown for economic growth, become central mode in urban and regional economy, produce social equity, and also demonstrate research impact globally. As we look back at this pandemic situation, so many sectors are growing out from their own constraints related to this effort digitalization, including education and research sector. I believe that this conference will be an interest for all of us, as I do not want to prolong my welcoming speech. I would like once again welcome you both personally and on behalf of the Universe Bas Bas Marat. I hope you enjoy this conference and thank you for your attendance. By saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I open this conference officially. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam.
warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Ahmad Yunus, for opening the conference officially. Next on schedule, we will have for the session. Please do the our honorable speakers and all of our participants to turn on your camera and let's smile. Again, to all our participants, please just turn on your camera because we will have for the session now. Everybody ready? We will start it now. Slide one. Slide two. Slide three. Don't forget to smile. Okay, one more. The last slide. Enough. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the first session of the plenary lecture that will be led by our moderator, Dr. Fitria Rahmawati from Mathematics and Natural Sciences Faculty, Universitas Sebelas Maret to carry the session. So please welcome Dr. Fitria Rahmawati. Dr. Fitria, are you ready? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor to me to be a moderator in this first session of the ICOSET conference, the second international conference on science, education, and technology 2020. For the first session, we will have two speakers. The first one is Professor Chun Yan Chang from National Taiwan Normal University. And then the second one is Professor Dr. Bernard Sajidan from Sebelas Maret University. Uh, we will have schedule for the first session from 8.35 until 9.45. And meanwhile, for the Professor Chun Yan Chang, we will have 8.35 until 9.10 until 9.10. But before we start with the first speaker, I'm going to read the short CV of Professor Chun Yan Chang. Professor Chun Yan Chang is a science education scholar in Taiwan. Currently, he serves as National Taiwan Normal University as a chair professor. And he is also a director of Science Education Center, NTNU, and a professor of the Graduate Institute of Science Education and the Department of Earth Science in NTNU also. And then over the past few years, he has been a visiting professor at the Education University of Hong Kong and the Paris Age University and has major research is in science education, e-learning, interdisciplinary science learning, and science communication. Professor Chang now is also an editor-in-chief of Eurasia Journal of Mathematics, Science, and Technology Education. And he is also an editorial board, one of the editorial board in SSGI, Index Journal. Uh, which uh, studies in science education and then 
so he studies in science education, learning, media and technology, and also in journal of science education and technology. In February 2013, uh, Professor Chang uh, has studied a critical O method transfers and then report her work, report his work on the New York Times Sunday magazine, as well as he also published his work on the Association of, Association of Psychological Science website. And now, uh, Professor Chang is in research team and has been selected as the exemplary institution in 2019 in Educase, I mean, Horizon Report. Uh, so I would like to welcome Professor Jun Yan Chang and for the first, session or the first one of the session one uh, is belong to you. Uh, you can present your presentation until 9, 10, and then we can proceed with the second speaker. Please, Professor Chang, time is yours. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Jia, for the nice introduction. Okay. Uh, uh, it is my pleasure uh, to uh, uh, to uh, speak with you, uh, especially during time like this. Okay, so because of the th the theme of this conference is enhancing uh, research and collaboration in science education on science education technology. So I try to uh, contextualize uh, my talk. Uh, uh, within this thing. So I would like to share with you regarding uh, my uh, experience in international research and collaboration, especially during time, uh, the time like this, okay, the COVID-19 and uh, it changes actually everything. So last year I was in your beautiful city. And uh, however, this year uh, we all uh, sort of stuck in our own, like uh, in front of our desk, okay? So, which means like, you know, the, but however, uh, research collaboration should go on. So this is why I would like to share with you, uh, especially during pandemics, uh, COVID-19 like this, how could we like, you know, continue our uh, research collaboration with all the others? So, uh, to start my talk, I would like to present you several uh, uh, important uh, articles regarding the international, such as international research and collaboration. As you can see from here, this slide from uh, 2000 to uh, year 2000 to 2013, and in 13 years, the international collaboration has collaborated significantly, at least 10%. Okay, so then, especially, you know, in the science and technology area, okay, but however, the lowest percentage is actually in engineering and uh, social sciences. So which means like, you know, as a, a especially a time like this, I think the international research and collaborations seems uh, uh, getting more and more important. This is another table regarding the leading countries as notes for international research published in cytometrics uh, uh, two years ago. As you can see, this leading country, Taiwan, of course it's on the list, but it's still in the lower rank, okay? So which means, uh, uh, Taiwan has a lot of things to do, okay? Although we do have some international collaboration. So what I'm going to uh, share with you is uh, we, of course, uh, so of course we need to uh, do some like, you know, international research collaboration. So if you are interested in there are uh, several articles, okay? 
For example, this one published in Prose Computational Biology, they show some like simple rules for how to establish in international research collaboration. So if you're interested, you can actually uh, uh, look at, at uh, that open access article. Uh, another is uh, actually published Nature. Okay, so they they this author they uh, already uh, lay out how to do the international research collaboration. So what I'm going to present you for the next thirty minutes is I would like to uh, share a personal story regarding how as a uh, science education researcher uh, get things international research collaboration started. And uh, of course, when after you are getting it started, how are you going to make it work? Then things uh, don't always go exactly as you expect. If it doesn't go as you expect, how you take it easy? Then I will do some reflection on the international research collaboration. So how to get it started? So I think uh, it's very important in terms of, you know, if you do international collaboration and the research, you need to, I call it a 5S, uh, networking connection, okay? Of course, from myself, and uh, uh, I will use my son as example, how do I start the collaboration with the Paris A University? Of course, you have some seniors helping you. And uh, if you do have a, uh, star students, great students, they will also help you in this journey. And because you have good friends, okay, I call it my shadows, okay? So I'd like to uh, give you several examples on how uh, we uh, start this. For example, this paper was published in 2010. So I work with a, a, a couple, they are from uh, Sweden. So we try to mine in the concept maps for new story for major in scientific literacy in media. So we call this uh, slim scientific literacy in media. Although it was uh, like published, uh, those two papers were published uh, 10 years ago, but uh, it's actually, we think it's a quite uh, good work in terms of how, to, how uh, we try to uh, see how do we uh, develop the concept of scientific literacy in media? Okay, and then we develop a, a measurement to measure students uh, or, you know, uh, lay people's uh, scientific literacy in media. Okay, so this is our, one of our, my first uh, international uh, collaboration, so to speak. Okay, so the scientific literacy in media is like this, okay. So we try to see how students, their ability to understand the scientific term in the science news. And we try to combine uh, the key, the, the, the major glossary from secondary school science textbook and try to search it in the science news in Taiwan, okay? So uh, originally we use a database, uh, more than 1 million articles. Then we try to see what are the highly, highly frequent scientific terms in the news from 2001 to 2002. Later on, we extended it to from 2001 to 2010, 10 years. And the results are actually quite similar, okay? So then, so this is uh, one of the research results, okay? So this, uh, this showing that the major scientific terms uh, highly frequently uh, occur in the newspaper, okay? So the circle size means the, 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 the bigger the circle size, more frequently it, uh, uh, it's uh, in, reported in, in news. So as you can see here, we have like a, the many, uh, like, you know, more, more terms in, in the more integrated subject like biology, earth science. For example, in Taiwan, we have a typhoon, okay? We have a earthquake. So you can see this is highly uh, occurred uh, scientific terms, okay? The more basic terms uh, in physics and chemistry, the more basic science, they, uh, of course, uh, they, they, they occur uh, less frequently 
in the science news. Okay. So this is a, 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 a then we continue the study from 2000 to 2019. So we got a very similar results. So out of that, we can actually develop some, I call it a slim based instructional module and curriculum, okay? So that was uh, one of the example, early example, the, the international collaboration. Later on, we also collaborate with uh, scholars from United States, mainland China and other countries. So uh, these are two other examples uh, uh, when you attract some people to come to your lab to work together. For example, uh, on the left, Shen, he is actually uh, doing his uh, visiting research with me. He is uh, from Harvard University. So at that time, we were doing some virtual reality things. So he really helped uh, working with us, okay, to uh, get uh, some research, uh, nice research, and uh, also uh, uh, publish papers together. And on the right hand is uh, another doctor student uh, doing some uh, bio bioenergy knowledge. So he's uh, 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 from, uh, 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 from other countries, okay. So then I would like to, uh, the, the second connection, I think you know sometimes it may be from your own family. For example, my son, he went to uh, Paris to study fashion design. <clears throat> so uh, uh, that was seven years ago. So I tried to, uh, these are some of uh, his work. So then, so I tried to see, okay, maybe I can also, well, uh, a joke, okay. Uh, in order to visit him. So I tried to uh, see if I can get some uh, collaborator in Paris. So then I made this uh, magnificent person, Charles Tigis. And uh, he's actually the at uh, based in Paris A University. So then he's a cognitive scientist. Although I'm a science educator, but uh, we can find some common thing to work together. So this is one of the example. So I publish a French article. <laughs> Actually, I don't know any French, but uh, I still, you know, get a, a French article published in in France. So um, uh, this is my uh, good friend in Paris. So we try to, you know, have fun together. <laughs> All right. So that was uh, Charles, Charles. So we, uh, so for example, uh, earlier uh, last year, so because we are doing some uh, uh, AR, MR, VR things, so we also publish a, a spatial article in the uh, uh, the, the largest uh, French uh, press. Okay, it's called uh, C A I R N Info. Okay, so it's uh, fortunate, you know, to have the, all this, you know, good collaborator. So of course, you have some of you are seniors. Uh, who can really, you know, uh, help. Uh, for example, my uh, senior from University of Texas at Austin, he, we have a same uh, graduate advisor. Then later on, uh, Chen Zhong, Professor Chen Zhong King, he became the Dean of College Education at Seoul National University. So we had, a, you know, like, a, uh, that was two years ago or three years ago, we celebrated our uh, birthday together <laughs> at this group, okay? Because of him, so we actually have a uh, Seoul National University, Hokkaido University, and my university, National Taiwan Normal University, and uh, uh, another university, Kaseisa University. We have this uh, joint symposium on science education. So maybe your university, if you are also interested in joining this, you know, like a symposium. So each university will take turn to host this uh, joint symposium on science education. Then you are also maybe in the future will come to join us, you know, every year one university will host this uh, special symposium on science education. So because of uh, like, you know, this other organizer, okay. So because of this uh, international connection, then you can do some uh, international research and the collaboration together. For example, uh, three years ago, I. I actually start a, a project called STEM to TV project. Okay, so the STEM educational research involve Taiwan. So there are two T, right? Taiwan, Thailand, and then Vietnam. Okay, 
So I worked uh, closely with Han LOE National University of Education, Professor Hien, uh, also become my, my, my best friend. So he's kind of like my extended family in Vietnam, okay, Kaseisa. So if, uh, you know, uh, maybe in the future, we can also have some collaboration in Indonesia, then we can work uh, things together, okay. All right, so of course you have some like, you know, star students, they actually can really extend your network, your research network. For example, this was uh, uh, Wang Hao, Wang Hao Quan. He was uh, one of my earliest uh, students. He uh, is uh, doing some interdisciplinary research uh, with uh, computer science. So right now he's a uh, professor in uh, UC Davis. Okay. And also, so we also published several papers together. Okay. And uh, uh, I want to mention uh, one, uh, my uh, just a graduate student, Bevo, Bevo Wahono. He is right now based in University of Jember. Okay. So we actually, uh, because of him, I actually start my connection with uh, uh, scholars, friends from Indonesia. Okay. So like uh, uh, Bevo and his uh, 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 colleagues visited me uh, two years ago while Bevo is doing his uh, uh, doctor, uh, working on his doctor degree with me. Okay, so Bevo is also my star student. Okay, so like, you know, for the paper at the bottom. Okay, so this is uh, published in Journal of Turkey Science Education. So I actually work, uh, Solano is uh, the, their uh, associate team in science education. So we also try to publish papers together. So this is a very a much, a, a big fun, okay, for, for us to publish it, you know, doing research, publish it together. So uh, because, uh, because of my uh, star doctor student, Bevo, okay, he, he went back to Jember. He's right now teaching in University Jember, okay. So we actually published a paper together this year uh, in International Journal of Standard Education. I think this is one of the good example in uh, doing research. So for Bevo's research, uh, doing some literature review, he tried to review some uh, science, STEM education status in Asia. So if you are interested, you can actually, uh, this is also an open access uh, article. So we try to see if there is any evidence of STEM enactment effectiveness in Asia student learning outcome, okay? So this is kind of like a review article. So we try to uh, uh, ex extract some literature from uh, Scopus, Eric, Science Direct, and the Google Scholar. Then we, uh, then we, of course, need to select uh, appropriate article for the review. So finally, we review uh, 54 uh, uh, meta uh, uh, think, uh, doing meta analysis uh, in STEM education. So this is, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to too detail, but this is a major results. Like uh, in, especially in East Asia, Southeast Asia. Uh, so you can see different subjects, science, math, different subjects and different effect sizes uh, in primary school, secondary school and higher education. So, uh, what I circle here is you can see the effect size is uh, the best, is the most, especially in Southeast Asia country. Okay, and uh, science, of course, has a, a more a bigger effect, effect size than science, than, than, than mathematics. Okay, so the, the conclusion of that uh, research, okay, overall, uh, uh, STEM enactment in Asia is actually quite significant. Okay. So then we have a higher effect on higher order thinking skill, learning achievement and motivation, okay? So then we also do some uh, uh, suggestion in terms of, you know, you need to contextualize your STEM lesson in local culture, okay? And uh, you can actually use any kind of teaching approach of learning model in order to have a uh, effective uh, STEM education. And the, the, of course, you need to a sufficient amount of time in order to have uh, the STEM uh, uh, STEM lesson uh, be effective. Okay, so these are one example. Finally, I also have a good shadows friends. 
they actually in, uh, extend my horizon. For example, uh, Professor Qin Zhongcai, maybe you also know him, a big name in science education. So he introduced me to join this uh, EU project, although it's also, it's almost uh, three, uh, 10 years ago, but uh, I, because of this project, I start, this is Qin Zhongcai. So I start to uh, work uh, extensively in Europe with a different professor in Estonia, France, uh, uh, Netherlands, for example. So another example is my, you know, a couple of 10 years ago, I met this uh, guy, Professor Ch Ping Lin, okay? So he's right now also a chair professor at the uh, University of Education uh, in Hong Kong. So he also involved me into a digital learning for development uh, funded by uh, uh, several world uh, funding. So in that way, I can actually travel to different South Asia country, okay, to develop this uh, digital learning, okay. So this is uh, the, my, you know, like uh, how to get it started. You have those five S connections. So then how to make it work? I think there are several uh, things you need to keep in mind because especially doing international research, you need to have a, a like be open-minded, okay? Sometimes, you know, although you have difficulty, but uh, try, uh, don't uh, try to uh, ignore it, okay? Keep on doing. So uh, the Stand 2 TV project was a, a, a project we initiated actually four years ago, okay? So uh, we, we do extensively, uh, extensive research with them. So one of the major thing is if you want to do some international collaboration, maybe you need to have some like good research. I call it a platform or tools, okay? So everybody can use that platform tool to do the research together. For example, I want to introduce you the Cloud Classroom. Uh, it's a free, uh, uh, free, Traditionally, they call it a clicker, but right now, because you have a device, you have a wi Wi-Fi, you have uh, you know internet access, then you can actually use this to do research together. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the the cloud classroom was actually selected as the exemplar uh, project institution by 2019 Horizon Report in the mobile learning category. Okay, so. If you are with me now, okay, so uh, it, you can just use your own device, computer to type ccr.tw, okay? It's a free uh, free cross platform. You can do research, you can do teaching, you can do anything you think appropriate for yourself. So it's a cross platform, you don't need to download, it's free of charge, highly interactive. We have 16 languages more than 70 students and teacher in there and more than half million records. So because you are, you, you, you are more close to, uh, we have a, a, a server in Singapore, maybe you can type sg.ccr.tw. So if you go to the, if you type there, then there are 16 language uh, with the help of my Indonesian friends. We also have an Indonesian ver uh, version. You can also check it out, okay? So please type uh, uh, CCR uh, or SG-CCR.TW. So I think uh, uh, from your side, maybe you can try to type SG-CCR.TW. I want uh, maybe five minutes uh, quick demo, okay? Five minutes quick demo. So once you are in there, you will see this like Facebook, Google account login. Please log in as a student because I'm the, your teacher now, okay? But later on, if you want to use it by yourself, you can use the same account, Facebook group account. Then you log in as a teacher, okay? So now you can log in as a student using Facebook or Google, or you can log in as a guest, okay? So please, once you log in, then you join the classroom 100, okay? If you are try it now by yourself, 100, okay? So then once you get into the, uh, once you get into the classroom, okay, 100, okay, then as a teacher, you can actually uh, create multiple classes. Then uh, 
student can send to, uh, private message to you or showing their emotion during the class. Okay, and then they can send a private message to teacher. They can uh, raise a public question. Then they can give several different type of question like a true, false, multiple choice or open-ended questions. And then you, of course, you can broadcast results like the old clickers. Then students can answer through text or pictures. Then you can actually group grouping students for doing discussion. So it's a, and you can do role swapping. So it's a very powerful tool. You are welcome to use it because it's uh, free of charge. Everybody can use it all over the world. Okay. So then afterwards you can download student, uh, especially for the smartphone version, you can doing some animation based question. Okay. Animation based question, like for example, we have this uh, seesaw collaborative problem solving module in the cloud classroom. You can use this. One student on the left hand side, one student on the right hand side, they can actually try to uh, chat, in the, uh, try to discuss how to get to the, the, the seesaw balance. Okay. Recently, we add a gaming module, which is, uh, you know, many teachers, students like it very much. So if you're interested, there's a agile course review called How Mobile Learning Can Support Global Student Engagement. Uh, I, I wrote this uh, article uh, article regarding the cloud classroom. And uh, of course, you can use it freely uh, on yourself. Okay, so this is the cloud classroom statistics. And uh, we have uh, like uh, worldwide use, of course, uh, you know, majorly in Asia, but uh, right now, uh, actually, uh, many people in the world using it. So I'd like to uh, uh, give you an example of this latest study. So I was uh, invited uh, during the past seven months uh, all over the world to give a talk like this, the Zoom talk. Okay, so for example, this is a Beijing Normal University uh, talk. So I use Zoom and uh, using Cloud Classroom as a supplemental tool to increase the interactive interact interactivity. So I then, of course, there are 379 professor and the student are in the Zoom, uh, uh, in a Zoom talk. But uh, when I use my cloud classroom, I call it an active audience. There are only 136 uh, professor and the students in the you know really classroom doing interactive with me. Okay, so which means like you know the pandemics, uh, COVID nineteen like this. Although you are doing this Zoom talk. But sometimes people are just doing it themselves. They don't necessarily, you know, listen to your talk. So, but with a cloud classroom, you can actually sub supplement supplement it. So, for example, this is another example from uh, Guang Guangxi Normal University uh, uh, in August. So, uh, we have uh, like 63 pre-service teachers, and then they all are very active using cloud classroom and uh, didn't talk with me. So after the uh, uh, after talk. I actually asked them several questions regarding, do you think uh, the integration of the Intalk CCR can enhance teacher-student interaction? And uh, do you think, uh, do you like it? So more than almost 100% the participant, pre-service teacher, they like this type of, you know, combination between the conference tour and also the cloud classroom. So especially pandemic like this, I will uh, suggest, recommend you if uh, you have your class, online, maybe you can also use Cloud Classroom for your class, which can actually really enhance the interactivity between you and the students and among students. So these are the positive, most of the positive feedbacks from the students. Of course, there are some uh, disadvantages, as like, you know, if the Wi-Fi network is too slow or too much noise. But generally speaking, it's actually quite good. So, uh, uh, Another study is uh, also uh, done with Babel actually in Indonesia. This is actually under review. We submit to a very, very good journal in our area. Okay, hopefully we can get this published. But uh, we also use Cloud Classroom, Indonesia uh, uh, setting. So this is uh, how students are doing the Cloud Classroom integrated with their activity. So we also have some interesting finding. I'm not going to go to detail and I hope we, if we can publish, maybe I can send you the paper in the long run. So the Cloud Classroom is actually a very good tool, cloud platform, collaboration with uh, different people around the world. For example, friends, they all, 
after pandemic, they also asked me to do a demo with them with a cloud classroom. So they are going to use their, this uh, in, in University of Strasbourg. We also did a study with uh, uh, Macedonia uh, using Cloud Classroom to teach how to do programming, okay? So, and of course, we also try to uh, leverage on that to get some uh, EU project. This is an Estonia collaboration, okay? And uh, another is a uh, Eurasmus project. It's also an EU research mobility project. I also uh, use this fund to go to Estonia. And uh, I also using Cloud Classroom to collaborate with uh, Tony Yong from uh, University of Trento at uh, Netherlands, okay? So uh, one of my doctor student, Lily Chen, uh, she's right now in a university center, okay, doing research with them. So this is how you get all this, you know, connection uh, together, okay. And with the Cloud Classroom, we also right now collaborate with uh, uh, Kyushu University in Japan, okay. So this is our online meeting, okay. And uh, we also use Cloud Classroom with uh, some uh, professor. I have a visiting professor, Jose Molina. Uh, he's from uh, the country, Colombia. So we also try to uh, do some like, you know, research together, okay. So I think uh, uh, if in order to make it work, you try to uh, reach out as, uh, uh, as much as possible, but at the same time, you need to have some good uh, research tool platform together. Maybe that will make it work better, okay. So of course uh, you need to, uh, Take it easy, easy when things don't uh, uh, go as you expected. For example, this is a uh, uh, ANR is a French uh, uh, research uh, funding agent. More says Taiwan is funded. We have this uh, co-funding project. So we actually submit this proposal. We call the Smart Classroom 3.0. Okay, uh, but however, for the past four years, we fail. Like for, for, for four years, <laughs> we didn't get it. We like, we like the idea of this proposal. We try to integration of the smart clothes, which clothes will change color. And then we try to integrate with the cloud classroom, okay? So for example, this is the idea, okay? This is how we envision the future classroom, okay? With the uh, smart clothes, which can change color. Then you can use that color to group student doing some to discussion. We like the idea, but however, we uh, we uh, fail four times, but that's okay. Because, you know, even though we didn't get funded, but we keep on trying, keep on fighting. Okay. So there's a Chinese saying, lü bai, lü zhan, lü bai, lü bai, lü zhan. so we keep on fighting. Okay. We try to, you know, doing this, you know, submitting together. So this is uh, like friends, you know, having fun. So this is uh, the professor from University of Strasbourg in France. He's a, uh, uh, he can, he can fly airplane. So doing international collaboration has a good, uh, you know, uh, advantage. So there was a one time I, I visited him and uh, he said, hey, Jinye, I have a surprise for you. So he actually fly his uh, airplane then and toy me around. So this is, you know, on the airplane. <laughs> Okay, all right. So, uh, so finally, okay, I think uh, if you want to do in good international research collaboration, this is from the paper I, I, I read in 2015. So like the, he got, you know, like 10 different rules. You can just, you know, uh, download that paper. I think it's a very good rule. Okay, so like uh, you consider a practical approach to a Spanish in a relationship you discuss dissemination policy as well as other things in, in advance, okay? We have a potential funding opportunities. So we always are looking for opportunities, okay? So in, in terms of doing international research collaboration, the, the thing most important to me is we, I try to make friends all over the world, okay? The research will end, but however, the friend, the friendship will last forever, okay? Of course, international research 
you don't need to read their 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 research article because it's a, a collaboration. So we complement to each other. Okay. So we try to communicate. Okay. So then we leave it to you know the destiny. Okay. If you want to do this, so I call it like when water flows, a channel is formed. Okay, just uh, let it be. Okay, all right. So the, my simple rule for international collaboration is actually making friends and having fun. This is actually the most important thing. Okay, this concludes my uh, talk today. And I hope that this uh, kind of like a topic talk regarding international research and collaboration will uh, give you uh, something you can start with yourself to connect with uh, different people all over the world. Like, you know, this conference is also a very good venue for connecting people. Because of this conference, I went to your, I visited your beautiful city and also made friends like uh, with uh, Professor Solisto Saproto. We are Facebook friends now. <laughs> so I hope uh, we can, you know, continue our dialogue and our uh, looking forward to a uh, good uh, collaboration with you folks in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Chen. An interesting talk, very interesting talk about how we increase collaborative research, international collaborative research during this pandemic. And also he has introduced us about CCL research platform in which we can make a broad classroom. It's very interesting application. And I like the conclusion that we can increase our international research collaboration by making friends and having fun. That's very interesting. Okay, I hope that later we will have a very fruitful discussion. But now we have to proceed with the second speakers. The second speaker will be Professor Dr. Redna Sajida. Uh, he is a lecturer in science education program with us last Marat, and he is also a vice rector of collaborative. Yes, a vice rector in collaboration, and uh, I'm going to with his short CV. He graduated the bachelor degree on 1989 in Pendidikan Biologi, Faculty of Education, Sebelas Maru University, and then he graduated Master in Biology from Universitas Gajah Mada on 1997. And then he got his doctoral degree from Humboldt University, Berlin, Germany on 2002. And today, Professor Sajidan will provide presentation about science-based entrepreneurship to innovative learning model uh, toward Indonesia and Society 5.0. So, Professor Sajidan, please, for the next for the next thirty times, will be yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Bu Pitri Rahmawati. Uh, and honorable uh, all the speaker, uh, I mean Professor Chang uh, Chang from NTNU uh, Taiwan. Uh, so Professor Mei Won from uh, Curtin University of Australia, and also Professor Krumpa from uh, in Ria, France, and also all the speakers. Uh, Prof. Yunus as a vice rector uh, for academic affairs, Universitas Plus Maret, also dean and vice dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Plus Maret, chair of the doctoral program of science education, and also the conference committee, and also the all participants. Let me share my slide, uh, please.
It's okay, Bu Rahma, Bu Fitri, Fitria. Yeah? Okay, Professor. Okay. Begin. Yeah, begin watch. Okay, Salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first uh, of all, I would like to thank the conference committee uh, for inviting me to deliver uh, deliver a speech in this event. I would like to talk about the framework of science-based entrepreneurship through innovative uh, learnings uh, model towards Indonesia on uh, in Society 5.0. Yeah. Basically, this speech is based on the uh, our research uh, paper uh, written co-author with some colleagues in Universitas Plus Maret. Yeah. I think I need uh, some uh, minute uh, because uh, today I have uh, the important agenda, just a graduation ceremony in Universitas Plus Maret, yes. Okay. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we have seen, the technologies, technological de uh, development has extremely uh, changed uh, to a failure of society, which is now uh, moving to society 5.0, uh, which is an era in which technology is being a part of human life. Yeah. Internet is uh, supposed uh, supports uh, not only to to be an information media uh, but is uh, also uh, becomes a part of life including in education uh, that most of uh, us in, involved uh, in basically the society uh, 5.0 uh, requires uh, is uh, innovation policy and also entrepreneurial uh, spirit and also, also uh, entrepreneurial skill. Yeah. Uh, Society 5.0 is aimed uh, at creating a concept of society that uh, focused on human. Yeah. With the economic growth and the changes uh, in the society, it is expected that any uh, challenge uh, can be handled. Therefore, each level of society uh, should enjoy a better quality of life. Yeah. Fundamentally, society uh, 5.0 uh, consists of innovation uh, policy and also the entrepreneurial spirit and also the entrepreneurial skill. Yeah. Higher education is an agent of change, uh, is a society maker that uh, capable uh, in adopting society 5.0 uh, through learning system. The learning system in uh, higher education need to be uh, directed toward entrepreneurship based learning. Entrepreneurship learning in uh, higher education is needed in any fields uh, regard, regardless uh, on one's field of uh, profession. Yeah. Basically, uh, Cypreneur is in, in the uh, concept of integration between entrepreneurial uh, values and science education, the integration of entrepreneur uh, in science learning is expected to bring some benefit, benefit yeah. Uh, which are integrated understand holistic so so the next slide so the concept of integration between entrepreneurial values and science education yeah. yeah basically uh and the integrated understanding uh, the benefit of Cypreneur uh, is integrated understanding, holistic, yeah, deeper understanding, 
the relationship between several subjects, the ability uh, to think critically and systemic, systematically, creative and innovative, uh, dare to the, take a risk and a competitive spirit, capable to seek and uh, creative opportunities, and uh, so the responsive social spirit and character. Moreover, uh, the conceptual model that can be adopted to welcome society 5.0 uh, is the creativity based learning skill entrepreneurship, uh, namely cell bodies. In the cell bodies, uh, there are six steps that uh, should be taken, uh, including this one is the uh, first step is associating, the second step is uh, questioning. And then the analysis and creating, communicating, and the last uh, step is the persuasion and networking. The six stages uh, should be combi combined uh, with the abilities or competencies needed in the Society 5.0. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this one uh, in the future, it is shown on the intersection between uh, uh, Cypreneur, this is a Cypreneur, and Cell Parties, and also the Society 5.0. The three uh, Cypreneur indicator, yeah, the three uh, uh, Cypreneur indicator uh, are communication skill, collaborative skill and also the observational skill. Yeah. Intersect with the cell bodies. Yeah. Intersect with the cell bodies. Uh, learning model. Uh, stages which are communicating. Yeah. This is the uh, yellow. Yeah. Communicating, persuasion and networking, networking and also the associating. The, and the other point intersect among the cypreneur and also SL party and the socio, uh, uh, society 5.0. This is the intersect the three uh, uh, cypreneur, cell parties, and society 5.0. Yeah. However, because not all point overlap between the three, it is necessary to design yeah, indicators that can synchronize among uh, cypreneurs. Cell parties and society 5.0, yeah, this one, therefore requires a, a framework that cell parties as a process and the competent in the society 5.0 as an output. Yeah. In this associating uh, stage, it's expected the create student having the ability and reviewing data, information and reference, implementing procedures and planning activities. Yeah. On the other hand, the indicator uh, from critical thinking in the society uh, 5.0 includes being able to identify problem problems and then the being able to identify alternative solution and being able to uh, determine the priority skill. Yeah. The associating stage and critical thinking indicator create cognitive flexibility indicator, which, uh, is, which is the human ability to adopt a cognitive processing strategies to deal with new and unexpected uh, condition in the environment. Yeah. The questioning states uh, help fostering curiosity, encouraging uh, is in asking, asking a question and deepening problem and knowledge. Yeah. The questioning states is in line with critical thinking to produce a competency indicator with its information verification. Information verification is a process uh, of determ uh, determining uh, the, the truth uh, of a statement using 
uh, empirical method. Yeah, in the information verification, students are required uh, to have uh, the ability among other to be able to sort and uh, select critical, critical data, information and references. And the second one is to be able to reduce irrelevant uh, information of data or, uh, or data, I'm sorry. And the third one is to foster a deductive, a deductive reasoning process. Yeah. In the analysis stage, yeah, a student uh, need uh, to develop a systematic mindset, organized data, information of uh, in, uh, and reference, uh, then process uh, them into uh, a model. Yeah. So this one, the analyzing, the third uh, step. This one. This is a uh, associating questioning analyzing. Yeah, the analyzing states uh, student need to develop a systematic mindset, organize data, information, and reference, uh, then process uh, them into a model. Uh, and society uh, 5.0, yeah, competency solve a complex problem requires the ability to formulate problems capable to set goals and capable to determine uh, methods or ways to solve problem problem the combina combination of analyzing states this is from analysis states yet yeah, this one with the competence to solve complex problem this one uh, create a learning indicator which is judgment and decision making Judgment and decision making are uh, the process is selecting alternative to make a decision making. And the fourth uh, step, this one is uh, creating. Yeah, in the creating stage, uh, it is expected that the student can visualize information or data, uh, capable to collect information and be able to create activity designs. It is intersecting with uh, creativity in the society 5.0, which is be able to imagine imagine uh, information to innovative or create 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 new solution, yeah, to come uh, up with ideas and to test those ideas. The creating stage and creativity create emotional. Intelligent indicator, which including ability to identify, understand, and manage emotion, to put ideas to the product, and also to organize activities according to the timeline. And the fifth uh, step, this one, is communicating. The communicating uh, states, students are expected to communicate it problem, yeah, commit problem. Uh, to communicate it opinion or ideas and uh, and to communicate it contextually and efficiently uh, the communicating state is related to also uh, with uh, solve complex com uh, solve complex problem which then leads to competency in a, a coordination with others coordination with other is indicated uh, by uh, empathizing with others uh, communicating, being professional, and understanding rights or obligator, obligation. Yeah. And the uh, last one, the uh, lastly, in the persuasion and networking stage, uh, students are expected to have ability to determine personal branding, yeah, to create network and partnership, as well as uh, to uh, convince others. This is related with creative, uh, creativity, yeah, which does uh, produce indicator for paper management, which is a process of optimizing the productivity of team members by providing motivation, training, and mobilizing or directing. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this one is uh, the speaker uh, is the result of synchronization of each stage of cell bodies uh, with society uh, 5.0 competencies create the concept for uh, cypreneurs. Yeah. The integration between uh, cell body states or and society 5.0 competencies yeah, between this one, the site and the this one. This is uh, into six uh, competency indicator will be applied to the cypreneur concept, cognitive uh, flexibility, and information uh, verification indicator with with will uh, produce critical thinking skill competence. Yeah. This and from from cognitive flexibility and information verification, this one to uh, produce critical thinking skill. And then judgment and decision making, uh, indicator will produce a competency of problem solving, yeah, on this one, uh, problem solving, and also from uh, an uh, observation skill, yeah. Emotional intelligence indicator will produce competence for creativity and innovation. And then coordinating with others, indicator which produce competency of problem solving skill. This one to uh, form coordinating with other to problem uh, solving skill and the communication skill, communication skill. Yeah. And the last one is people management indicator will produce uh, collaborative, yeah, collaborative skill competencies. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah, this table present uh, the learning states uh, to achieve cypreneur uh, competencies through the integration of science and entrepreneurship learning in its indicator. For example, here indicator of competency cognitive flexibility. Uh, from this uh, indicator uh, of competency cognitive flexibility, uh, the first learning state uh, here is student do an observation on the pro problem of customer and then look for some article uh, or references based on the real problem. And also student can identify the alternative solution that could be implemented or a product uh, that uh, could be produced. Yeah. And the second uh, indicator of competency, information verification. Yeah, this one, student validate a customer problem and need and determine a specific customer segment. And also student can determine the focus of the problem to be solved. Yeah, and judgment and decision making, the student uh, be brainstormed with other group about customer problem and alternative solution or product to be offered. Student determine the superiority uh, of uh, the product uh, to be offered. And then student create a plan of a production strategy. Yeah, and et cetera. And then last, uh, uh, indicator of competency uh, uh, here is people management the student make a team structure and job uh, description yeah and then uh, the student collaborate in a team to create a budget plan and the last is student arrange uh, the activity report so I think this uh, is the last slide for, for me. From me, uh, I want to conclude uh, my talk uh, this morning. Uh, I will simply uh, reiterate uh, here that the integration between cell body stages and society 5.0 competencies result in six competency indicator that are applied to uh, the cypreneur concept. Yeah. Cognitive flexibility and information verification indicators will lead to critical thinking skill. And the second one, judgment and decision making indicator 
will create problem solving uh, skill and observ observational skill. And then third one, emotional intelligence indicators will create creativity and innovation. Uh, uh, and then coordinating with other indicators will create problem solving and communication skill. And then the last one this paper management indicator will produce collaborative skill. Yeah. Yeah, this is our uh, article about effectiveness of self-practice learning model uh, on student uh, creativity thinking skill is on, on the topic of simple food biotechnology. Uh, this one is has been published uh, in international uh, in international journal interaction. Uh, this is Corpus uh, journal. Thank you very much. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Sajidan. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, I have uh, uh, the other agenda. This is graduation ceremony of UNS at uh, at ten o'clock, uh, and I want I want uh, prepare yet. And let me leave uh, from webinar uh, this one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So if, yeah, we should, uh, if we should, uh, there is some question, uh, can we send to you by email or something? Professor? Okay. Thank you. Okay. I stop. Thank my... you, Professor. Very interesting yes. talk in integration concept between entrepreneurial values and design and education and how we prepare our students to having skill to proceed to the society 5.0. And um, actually, we have discussion time up to 10 and 15. But uh, two of our speakers are leaving now because of another schedule. Professor Chang also must leave this conference. And um, he asked us to send an email. Uh, part participant can, can write the question on the chatting menu on this Zoom, or also you can send your question to the committee and then the committee will send your question to Professor Chun Yang Chang's or uh, other, other option. You can you can directly send your question to Professor Chun Yang Chang. The email address is chungng at ntnu.edu.tw. And also because of the, another schedule of Professor Sajidan, Professor Sajidan also must leave early uh, from this conference. And if participants has many questions to him, you can also send your question to the committee and the committee will send to Professor Sajidan. Or you can also, of course, send directly to Professor Sajidan, probably by email or I think is it okay also to send by WhatsApp? So, because yeah, we don't we don't have our speakers to to of them. So I think I can close this first session. Maybe we can move to the second session. For me as moderator, thank you very much for your attention, and I believe that. Uh, the presentation of our speakers will increase our knowledge and our ability to adapt our ability and research and collaboration and research during this pandemic era. Me, Fitriya Rahmawati, as moderator, thank you very much. And I close this session by saying Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Fitriya Rahmawati, for being the moderator for the session of the plenary lecture. We will now continue the next session of the plenary lecture with our moderator, Professor Gunar Hadi, from Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Blas Maret. Please welcome Professor Gunar Hadi. Professor Gunar Hadi, are you ready?
Yes, halo, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes. And now we come to the second session. And we have uh, two speakers as well in this session. The first presenter is uh, Mihye Won. Yes. Mihye Won, are you, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, yes. Uh, Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I would like to repeat once again. Yes. Uh, once again, the first speaker uh, will be Mihe Won, and uh, she will be talking about the uh, immersive virtual reality. But before we come to the presentation, uh, we would like to read uh, her uh, curriculum detail. That uh, Miss Mihe Won is a associate professor uh, in STEM Education Research Group, uh, the School of Education from the Curtin University. Yes, uh, a little bit about uh, education. Uh, she has a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from EHA University, the Seoul, South Korea. And her Master Degree of Education is uh, on Chemistry Education from EHA Women University, uh, Seoul, Korea as well. While for the PhD, as he is the PhD in education, uh, particularly in the curriculum and instruction from the University of Illinois at the Urbana uh, Campaign, uh, USA. Uh, he has uh, done a lot of uh, research and also publication, but uh, I think uh, we don't have much time to read because this is a long list of the experience in uh, research and also publication but uh, the most interesting things uh, to tell the audience here is that uh, she has now doing the research grant in two uh, big project the first is uh, the student generated diagram to learn and then a scientific thinking skill. The title is Drawing Science Diagram that to hands a student scientific uh, creativity. And the second is uh, the collaborative science learning in immersive uh, virtual reality environment with the title Using Immersive Reality to Enhance Science. Uh, science visualization yes. and there are a lot more i don't think it is wise to uh, read all this yes. uh, prof mihe won 
I think we have uh, around uh, 30 minutes uh, for you to speak. And I think it's time for you to start the presentation. Okay. Okay. Thank you for introduction. Okay. Okay. It's an honor to be here today. Um, it is an odd situation. I really enjoy presenting in conference in front of the audience, but uh, because of the COVID situation, I can travel to Indonesia and meet with you um, face to face. So this should be uh, the be best alternative option here. Um, as um, introduced, my name is Mihe Wan. I am currently at Curtin University and I am conducting research projects. Uh, one involving immersive virtual reality, and I'm going to talk about um, what we can learn from investigating uh, students learning from, uh, through virtual immersive virtual reality. And people talk about immersive virtual reality as a new thing, but as I will discuss later, it has been investigated over many years. So educators haven't been tapping into this possibility and they are wondering what we can do and how we do it. So I'm going to talk a bit about what I understand as educational possibility and how we can tap into the possibility here today. And as you can see, I am working with um, other researchers, Professor David Trigust, uh, also said Professor Moro Moserino, and Professor Chin Chang Sai from National Taiwan Normal University, and Ruby Tesker from Purdue University, and Dewey and Henry are my PhD students I'm working on this project. So the, the findings are collaborative effort, and I am just presenting this as me today. And I wish they are all here and join me in presenting the study findings, but Today, I will just present the findings to you. If you have any questions, do not afraid to ask questions at any moment, okay? So let me quickly uh, see how many of you have heard of uh, immersive virtual reality. Uh, thing is, I cannot see you here. Um, let me. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. So I am not sure how many of you are aware of immersive virtual reality. And if you look at these photos, they may look odd. And it seems like they are doing something in the air and they are doing some funny things. But I am not sure if you have experienced immersive VR, but as soon as you put the head headset in, you are immediately transported into immersive virtual world, virtual world. So I, um, if you go to 3D movie theater, you will see um, the screen and some objects are jumping at you. So you feel like some of the balls or the bats or some of the strange objects are flying to you. So you feel like um, something is approaching you and they are right in front of your eyes instead of back on the screen. So think of this immersive virtual reality as much enhanced version of feeling objects all around you. You feel in 3D movie, you feel everything is around the screen. And if you turn your head right and left, you will see your friend's face or some other people's face. But in immersive VR with the headset on, all you will see is the virtual environment. So it is quite different feeling um, you feel like you are transported into virtual world. So you are no longer in your physical world. So it is quite unique experience. And I wish I can really give you a really good description of what it feels like in immersive virtual reality. 
But if you have uh, some kind of equipment, I recommend, I strongly recommend you to try this really amazing visual te visualization technology. Once you put the head on and experience a good program, you will be fascinated by the possibility of it, okay? So um, even though it feels like, oh, it feels really odd looking at the photos um, on the left-hand side, the users will see is the photo from right hand side. They may feel like they are transported in the middle of galaxy and they are working and manipulating a molecule in the middle of it. And they can see their partners manipulating the molecules together with you. So this is the environment uh, we are talking about, immersive virtual reality science learning environment. Okay, people say it is fast developing technology, um, but in actual fact, um, the immersive virtual reality has been developed in 1970s uh, based on the armed military technology. They wanted to give a bit of realistic sense for the fighter pilots, okay? So since then, we have had a cave system or the projection system to show 3D objects. But now uh, for last few years, the commercial public domain uh, equipment has gained popularity. So you will see mobile phone based immersive VR, like Samsung Gear, or a bit more advanced thing, uh, Facebook's Oculus Quest. And if you move up to more of the professional version of it, you will see HTC Vive, okay? With HTC Vive, you will be able to see your hand, your own body, and the virtual tracking device will track you where you are, where your head is, and where your hands are, and where your partners are. So you feel like you are actually moving around in the virtual environment. Many people feel that it is for gaming only, not for education, but surprisingly, um, education sector and training sector has been adopting immersive virtual reality quite well. So for example, the for safety training, people put the head goggles on, headset on, and do uh, practice some kind of uh, daily managing dangerous chemicals or dangerous equipment so that they feel like they are actually dealing with dangerous materials before actually dealing with the dangerous materials. So it provides really good training experience for people. So um, big tech companies like Facebook, Samsung, Google, Microsoft, and Apple, they are all uh, investing big money to develop this technology of immersive virtual reality. And based on one report, it, um, in 2018, the market was $18 billion, $18 billion, but it is projected to increase to $159 billion by 2021. So it is really massive, fast growing market. Okay, so, but different from computer-based technology or internet-based technology, immersive virtual reality has its unique features. So it is quite new to many people. Educators are not sure how we can tap into the possibility and what is the actual possibility of immersive virtual reality for education. So in this presentation, I will present a framework to investigate the educational affordances of immersive VR. Is everything working okay for you? Okay, silence means good thing, right? So I will move to the next slide. But if you have difficulty understanding the comment or the speech, please stop me and ask questions, okay? 
So immersive virtual reality, people often think about visualization as a key thing. But in my mind, immersive virtual reality's key point is immersion. Immersion means that you are actually immersed in the environment and you forget everything else, okay? Um, you often have that kind of immersive in, uh, experience. If you are really into the work you are doing, you forget time, you forget your hunger, you just lose track of everything and completely immerse into the task you are doing. That is immersion I'm talking about, okay? So when, uh, la only last week, when we did a user trial with university students, a uh, couple of students went uh, through the VR experience for five, zero minutes, 15 is almost one hour. But once he put the headset off, he said, oh, I was there only for five minutes, five minutes. But I told him, you, uh, he was there for almost an hour, but he didn't believe me. He thought he was there only for five minutes because he was enjoying the experience, learning experience so much, he completely lost track of time. So that is the possibility of immersive virtual reality. So to identify the educational possibilities, I tap into this immersion aspect. And Chris Diddy from Harvard University proposed four immersion strategies. One is sensory, second, actional, third, narrative, and fourth, social. Okay, sensory, actional, uh, narrative, social immersion strategies are key things you can think of to tap into or understand the possibility of immersive virtual reality. So let me explain what I mean by each immersion strategy, okay? Sensory immersion is, people often say, seeing is believing. Once you see something in virtual environment, and if you can touch it, and if you feel it, you feel like you are in the environment, okay? So uh, people often say um, that the first thing people experience in immersive virtual reality, immersive VR, is going into really big skyscrapers group. Even though you are standing in the middle of a room, in virtual environment, you feel like you are standing on top of a skyscraper, okay? So you look around and you will see all the high rise buildings or the big tall mountains surrounding you, right? And if you look down, you realize you are standing on top of skyscraper. And if you put your step forward, one step wrong, you feel like you are going to fall into great death of disaster. And you feel like, oh, it's really scary. I cannot put my foot forward because I am standing on the skyscraper. But in actual fact, in physical world, you are standing in the middle of the room. There's no risk of harming yourself. But as a user, you feel like you are actually in on top of a skyscraper, okay? That is a sensory immersion. Realistic visualization, realistic 3D visualization gives the feel of you are actually immersed in, in um, virtual reality environment. Excellent immersion is that when you are manipulating things, when you're moving things and touching things, and the objects are responding to your input, you feel like you are actually interacting in the immersive virtual environment. There was an experiment. Um, I really recommend you to watch the video. Fake arm experiment. If you Google fake arm experiment, you will see it, okay? 
So a, a person was actually seeing a fake arm next to your real arm, okay? And once you see your fake arm stretching from your body and your real arm was is hidden from your view, you will feel your fake arm is your body, okay? So once someone else is trying to hit your fake arm, you will flinch and you will just pull away your whole body because you feel like it is part of you, uh, your body, okay? So in virtual environment, because you are moving things with your virtual hand, you feel you are actually in the body and your avatar is part of you, okay? So that is one other way to immerse users into virtual environment. Another one is narrative immersion. You are becoming the protagonist main character of a really interesting story, okay? You could become a fighter pilot of immune system to fight off bacteria infection, but you can travel back in time to uh, cure the villagers of infectious disease, okay? And social immersion is that instead of having one person sitting in front of computer or one person navigating virtual environment, you can pair up with your peer and explore the virtual environment together. So those four components are some of the key features we can employ in virtual environment. So how can educators use these different emergent strategies to improve science learning experience? I am going to show you what we did in an um, earlier project. So in chemistry, we often talk about visualization, importance of visualization, because many chemical reactions are uh, visual spatial thinking dependent. You will have to imagine what molecules would look like and how atoms would look like and how molecules will behave in 3D space. But if we show the molecular structure on a piece of paper, it is really difficult to visualize that 3D structure in students' mind. So um, we often adopt physical Borenstein model, and I'm sure you will all familiar with the physical Borenstein model. And some other times we use computer visualization tool to show the stereochemistry structure of it. But it is difficult to see the 3D structure even in 2D display. So my colleague and I develop a program to help students visualize these complex chemical molecules so that they can better understand the chemistry concepts behind the complex molecule interactions. So the topic was a structure and interactions of enzyme substrate reactions. So it is protein and catalysis reactions. And we recruited the first year university students. Um, and we identified the main learning objective and structured activities around it. And as I said earlier, um, in current literature, we talk about social constructivism as the main pedagogical approach. So we really wanted to have two people, two students interacting in a virtual environment together. So we constructed a, a protein world, protein molecular world. And in the, the left-hand corner, you will see the Acetylcholine, the molecular structure, and students will build this molecular structure in the beginning. In, and after they are done with the substrate, they will move to the 
middle uh, um, middle picture, it is the electron cloud of protein, the enzyme, and they will be able to zoom in, zoom out, and see how the polarity is, um, the electron density maps are arranged, and what kind of molecules are inside the protein. And later, after they explore the protein structure, they will place this substrate, a uh, small lump molecule, into the reaction site. So the catalytic reaction happens. As you can see, <clears throat> students can see the partner there. Um, I am not sure if you can see the cursor here. And the, the partner's whole body is not um, apparent here, but from the headset and the controller, you can assume your partner is there and looking from that area, okay? So um, we wanted to give the feel of students being transported into the molecular world. And students recognize that aspect, the sensory immersion aspect there. And when I asked the students, how was it? Chloe said, Yes, it did feel real. When I accidentally zoomed in too fast, I thought the electron cloud would hit my face, which was why I said, whoa, moving back. And her partner said, yeah. And I forgot I was in a room after a while. So they felt like they were transported into this molecular world, interacting with the protein interacting with the catalysis, um, catalytic reaction. The second strategy we adopted in this program was external immersion. Student, uh, students were able to move back and forth of the substrate, the molecule, and see the, ex the reaction between protein, the enzyme, and substrate happening there. So students felt that the activity itself was really relevant, engaging, and interactive. So Leo said, it was nice to see the structure, the protein structure, and to be able to move them, rotate them, and redo it. So it was really nice being able to move it and have the pseudo-tangibility of something that is normally in the domain of textbooks and YouTube. The students really enjoyed the interactive aspect, moving things around, rotating it, and place the substrate in the right position so that the reaction could happen. The next one was social immersion. So instead of one student going through the activity alone, they were able to consult the partner and discuss their ideas and justify why they are doing this way or that way. We also provide some kind of discussion prompt to justify answer or explain their answer. Catherine said, I think everything worked out well, but I think that it was good that we got to try it out ourselves first, and then they show us what it actually is. And her partner said, yeah, and then we had time to talk about why we were wrong. They talked about why they were right, but at the same time, they talked about why they weren't uh, correct in their answer. So it really gave them a chance to build their understanding through the activity. So when we evaluate the learning experience, we often talk about three components. One, is engagement and motivation to learn. And second is development of scientific understanding. And three, how they interact with one another to have the collaborative uh, learning happening. And as I showed you earlier, the engagement and motivation was really fantastic. Students all appreciated the experience and in terms of development of scientific understanding, they were able to grasp the polarity and structure of molecules 
are actually really critical component to consider when you have the protein enzyme reaction happening. So they all talked about the importance of polarity and structure of molecules. After the, the session was done, I asked some really tough questions and they were able to answer those questions to me. And they also realized that uh, enzyme substrate reaction is much more complex than they originally thought. Um, we often teach uh, enzyme reaction as a lacking key mechanism, and it is very simplistic explanation, especially in high school and first year chemistry. But by going through the activities in this virtual environment, they were able to appreciate the complexity of it and also some underlying principles of polarity and structure molecules really determining the enzyme reaction. And also they talked about the, the benefit of collaborative learning. Even though we paired up some strangers into this group activity, they were able to uh, negotiate their meaning and construct their ideas together. So I will show you a big quote here. Stephanie, when I learned about acetylcholine esterase of protein in human biology, I imagined a little dot breaking up acetylcholine instead of what we just saw. Her partner, for the protein structure, what we learned in class was misleading a bit because it relies on your own perceptions of what it could be rather than actually showing what it is like. I didn't really know before how many reactions are involved in the enzyme reaction until they, meaning VR, showed it to us at the end, like how everything happens, how it moves into the triad and how it moves out of it. I didn't know any of that and how many molecules are involved. And her partner said, yes, I was the same. I pretty much imagined an enzyme would be like a little dot going like this and breaking it up. But it is so different. It is a lot more complicated. A lot more is involved that I didn't know before or consider. So they were able to grasp some fundamental concepts in virtual reality in much more engaging, enjoyable way in a collaborative manner. So I am not going to go into the systematic literature review we have done, but I want to say a um, couple of things. As I showed you here today, we can adopt sensory, actional, narrative, social emergent different strategies to investigate the possibilities of immersive virtual reality. But disappointingly, not many education researchers adopt these emergent strategies in a smart, intelligent way or in a systematic way. So we do need to really understand the possibility of immersive virtual reality and systematically investigate the possibility of it so that we can use it to enhance students' learning experience so that they can enjoy science learning and build better understanding of science. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I am done with my presentation. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Mia Hewon, for the nice presentation. This is uh, really an interesting uh, topic uh, to share. Yeah, and then we hope that uh, we can really apply and utilize into the educational setting. Yeah. In short, yeah.
Oke. Okay. So once again, uh, we can make a tentative conclusion in this case that there are four types of uh, immersion, immersive uh, virtual reality uh, in terms of our sensory action, narrative, and social. In almost the same. Would you repeat the question again? I didn't really hear. Sorry. Yeah. So this is not a question, the prof. It's just a little summary so that uh, we can really raise some, some questions. So there okay. are four types of uh, virtual uh, reality indices. Uh, first is the sensory immersion. Second is uh, action, narrative, and then, then social. Yes, we hope that all these kind of things can be utilized in education setting to explore the education possibility in the classroom. Yes. yes. Uh, for the audience, uh, just to make sure that you keep the question in mind. Later on, when we have come to the next presenter, uh, we will have the questions open for you. Or you can uh, chat in the chat room so that uh, we can identify all these. Yes. Okay, uh, before we come to the question, I think uh, we will go to the next presenter. Yes, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Prof. Uh, Minye Wong. Hello, are you there? Yes, I am here. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is uh, one question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, it is a uh, mistake. I'm sorry, Ms. Wong. Okay, uh, for the time being, I think we can uh, go ahead to the next presenter. Uh, the next presenter, as uh, it is scheduled, uh, should be Stephanie Ulbach. Yes, Prof. Stephanie Gramberg. But uh, due to some uh, reason or circumstances, uh, he wouldn't be able to be with us uh, this uh, opportunity. But we have uh, replaced with another presenter. Yes. Uh, Vishnu Uriawan. Yeah. Uh, Vishnu Uriawan, are you yes, here? I, yes, I'm here. Sir. You are here. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vishnu Uriawan. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Let me tell a little bit about uh, his uh, curriculum feature. Mm -hmm. That uh, he is now uh, a student, or you have finished uh, with your study in France? Almost finished my study. Yeah, you have finished already. Yeah, you studied in France, uh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, again, uh, there is a lot of uh, experience in this case, but we wouldn't be able to read all this, but uh, just to make it short, I think uh, I would like to read uh, the education background, yes. Yes, uh, that... Uh, Mr. Vishnu Rawan is uh, originally Indonesian. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. You are from Bandung, yeah? Uh, yes. Pak Vishnu, yeah, thank you yes, very sir. much. Yes, okay. Uh, his education is uh, first in the undergrad. It's from the uh, ST Intan, yeah? Sekolah Tinggi Intan, Bandung, yes? Yes. Yes, okay. And then for 
his uh, master degree. Uh, he studied uh, in uh, Sekolah Tinggi Stemik, ya, man? Yes. Stemik Okmi Bandung. And uh, his uh, doctoral program oh, in the S3. Uh, he takes, uh, oh, he studied in Insa the Lion France. Yes. yes. Yeah, he is really expert in the information and also uh, yeah he, he said that he mentioned his uh, title is informatic and informatic and mathematics is it your uh, research than the last time when you studied in french yes okay thank you very much and for the time being uh, he's not he is not in indonesia but he is still in france yeah uh, yes. in uh, feller ben uh, Cadex, France, yes. I'm sorry if uh, it is mistaken. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, in uh, presentation, uh, he will be speaking about the uh, D-App uh, architecture for personal lending on blockchains based on the borrower's trust uh, with Tennis. This is uh, an application, especially used in uh, banking, yeah, or maybe in other companies like uh, financial or yes, financial uh, institution, especially. But I think uh, for you to talk about this, uh, we need to speak uh, more slowly in this case because this is also something really new to us, yes. Okay. Okay, Pak Vishnu, I think uh, I give you a time about uh, 30 minutes as well to present yes. all your uh, materials. Okay, time is yours for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Gunnar Hadi. Uh, I will uh, share my screen. You can see my screen? Yes. Okay. okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bonjour à tous. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here. I try to share with you about my uh, current research. And uh, this is uh, my idea. How about the research uh, and hatching and collaboration? The first one I introduced uh, from Liris Dream Researcher. And this is from Liris, SNRS, and uh, Pennsylvania State University and INSA uh, Lyon, France. This uh, main objectives, uh, how about the classic research concept uh, and then new research concept and uh, current research. The background is how about the mention, if I, I try to, the words, uh, the keyword, the two keywords, uh, if I try to learn or research and then uh, we're asking about the two words the first one is how about the novelty and then the second one is contribution this is the the most uh, popular in uh, scholar and uh, i think for phd student and also the researcher this is uh, i will show you about the classical research uh, this is for the first time Usually, we define about the topic, but uh, how about the topic? Uh, can imagine if I try to start the res this research without uh, define the topic, and then after, if I finish the uh, define a topic and then uh, narrow the topic, how about the differences uh, about the define topic and narrow the topic? The first one is. Uh, how many uh, idea can describing if I choose the one or the best uh, problem for the looking for the solving. And then after I will try to gather information. The problem is uh, if I try to gather information uh, at, as long as the how uh, many uh, area uh, with uh, impact will impact this uh, from the topic and then after uh, the result can be applied 
in many information there. And after, uh, we develop about the research question. This is uh, for a suitable uh, area, and then I will choose the how to develop it. And after, I will evaluate, and then the last thing is uh, publish this research. This is a flow of uh, classical research, but uh, in this time, in this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, this is, uh, we, we hope uh, can uh, evaluate this uh, method is not suitable for this moment. This is, uh, I will show also for uh, weaknesses of classical research. The first one is sequence. This is uh, many work uh, we did about the how many plays, how many uh, time, and then uh, sequence uh, without uh, centralized stick and distribute the work. This is need more time. And then physical oriented, uh, we have to meeting a uh, daily meeting or a weekly meeting or monthly meeting. This is uh, many meetings for uh, physical oriented, but uh, <clears throat> this is uh, wasting time. And then uh, laboratory dependencies. This is uh, also if uh, I try to, for example, the biology or another, this is uh, laboratory dependencies. And then the teamwork. This is uh, how I can uh, do my research project if I try to only uh, only one person or another person can to gathering this uh, research. This is uh, need a team or peer group. How about the uh, research based in new normal? This is a part of research concept. Uh, as well as a uh, sequence, this is uh, an idea how to develop the research. This is based on the randomized. Uh, the research can be uh, solved with, with um, many ways uh, in the short time. This is more faster. And then a recent issue. In this moment, uh, I think this is uh, very important for uh, technology or another uh, education background and IT. This is for the moment uh, as uh, during uh, pandemic COVID-19. This is uh, opportunity uh, for develop something new uh, idea in uh, education. Next, uh, literature study and individual oriented. This is uh, in the future, uh, research is based on uh, literature study and individual oriented because it's uh, many places, um, uh, many laboratory is uh, still closed uh, during a pandemic of COVID-19. How about the advantages uh, new research concept? This is uh, the first one is uh, scalable. How uh, can the research is uh, scale up or scale down uh, depend on the uh, funding system and then the time uh, available and uh, another. Next, uh, cost effective. This is, uh, it should uh, be low cost. This is uh, more likely and then transparent of the table and more faster and sustainability. That's why, how about the advantages in new research concept? This is more sustainability in the future. How about the, my current research? This is about the, uh, I will to introduce to laboratory and environment information. This is my laboratory, uh, laboratory informatics on image uh, system information. This is uh, many uh, group, uh, research group. This is, uh, I'm including in uh, DREAM, distribution and research, the information and mobility. Uh, we have uh, many field in this research, for example, uh, like if distribution, this is uh, for uh, many uh, data set and then uh, try to distribution and then research information and mobility. Uh, for example, this is, uh, we have an IoT uh, system and then a problematic uh, auto, the system. This is, uh, for example, in many distribution uh, based on the data set and then for uh, human uh, numeric, this is, for example, a GIS system. This is our uh, laboratory. And how about uh, our research uh, today? This is, uh, we develop uh, and try to introduce new technology. This is, uh, it's called the blockchain. 
uh, the people know the blockchain is as well as the Bitcoin. But in another side, this is uh, blockchain is mainly feel a uh, can of flying for uh, research uh, like an, in uh, education and uh, another or, finan or financial uh, or banking system. This is uh, my uh, background for uh, this research. Uh, we interest to how the blob we dependencies to banking system or financial institution. This is for uh, lending. This one uh, describing how uh, to uh, uh, develop uh, architecture for personal lending. I think it's uh, most uh, familiar for, for example, uh, Indonesian government employee. This is for a lending system uh, to bank or financial institution. How about the data flow of traditional lending system? This is, uh, I will try to describing how about if I, need some uh, cash or um, some loans from the financial institution or banking system this is uh, i will to propose or uh, applying some loan or credit this is a lending process this is uh, if i try to apply some loans and after uh, or another uh, system like uh, small medium enterprises also or scale up their uh, enterprise and they need uh, some uh, funding and then try to apply uh, some loan or credit. But in this process uh, will be burdening for uh, these uh, users because a financial institution need some ground, uh, guarantee or uh, collateral from uh, another person or document or asset. And then if after uh, approval, in lending process, uh, banks, financial institution will uh, coordination with central bank for approval some credit. This is a traditional lending system. How about uh, the new system in uh, lending uh, platform? This is uh, we must from uh, provide to if I try to propose some loans. This is about the collateral. What is uh, collateral? This is some uh, asset or guarantee they allow to uh, you to can uh, get some loans. This is pro and cons. If I uh, can uh, pay back the loans, I will lose my uh, collateral. This is uh, dangerous for uh, user. And then what can I use, uh, use as a collateral? For example, uh, in uh, government employee, for example, uh, we lend uh, by SK PNS, I think so. And yeah. after uh, finish, and I will get uh, back the SK. Uh, for example, that next, uh, where to find the collateral loans? Or well, if I try to uh, lending, try to propose some loans to another uh, financial institution, they they need some uh, guarantee. For example, your house, your car, and others or document uh, important. Then after, uh, what is a collateral loan alternative? You can get the loans without collateral, but it's uh, in a little amount of money. The problem statement, for example, this is how can we compute the trustworthiness? How they, uh, the lender can allow or borrow some money to, to uh, borrow uh, without uh, collateral because not everybody uh, have some collateral. This is uh, our idea, uh, try to introduce trustworthiness. Next, in existing uh, lending platform are based on requiring the borrower to submit some collateral. This is a uh, burden for uh, user. If I try to uh, propose some loan, they are requiring for a collateral. Next, uh, we can establish the lending platform where user borrower can get the loan based on the trustworthiness without collateral. This is uh, my idea. Uh, next, what is the advantage of blockchain lending? This, this one for scalable. If uh, we use for the little organization, it's suitable. And then after it's uh, greater or more than a bigger, yeah, we can also set up this uh, platform uh, lending. 
Next, cost effective. As we know, if I try to propose some loans to bank or financial institution, this is uh, many costs uh, for the users to try to propose some loans. But in here, in uh, blockchain lending, uh, we don't need to another uh, hidden cost. Next, uh, transparent, because uh, it's everything uh, handled by a computer system. Next, uh, by automatic. As we know, if uh, in traditional lending, uh, the manager will coordinate with a central bank. In, in here, in blockchain lending, we, we work in automatic system. It's also, it's more faster than traditional and more secure because uh, it's uh, everything uh, guard with uh, the security system in blockchain. This is uh, describing of use case, uh, trustworthy blockchain based lending platform. This is uh, describing how what the two or investor or lender and borrower uh, can uh, communication in this my system. In this uh, borrower side, uh, we can also uh, use sort of create account for the first time and then loan propose and join investment group withdrawal, payment installment and user delete account. And then uh, investor side, this is uh, for functionality, the system, this is uh, for fund account and then create an investment unit and manage investment unit and withdraw, withdraw fund and uh, investor delete account. This is how about the investor can uh, borrow some money to borrowers. This is uh, our system will provide this uh, application to make on transaction. Beside the loan and also investor who get the interest uh, will discussion. I think it's less than or not uh, too much for uh, set up the interest on interest here. This is uh, very interesting because uh, many bank or financial institution with highest uh, interest. How about the architecture system? This is uh, our uh, architecture pro propose. This is about the main component of the how uh, many borrowers can access and then uh, how many lenders can borrow some money. This is uh, blockchains will provide to uh, actor. This is for example, in borrower side, we have a lending management and then trustworthiness like on credit scoring and then recommendation and wallet. This is uh, electronic wallet. For example, uh, if, I, if uh, I try to use the MetaMask or another uh, kind. Next, this is uh, introduced of the smart contract management, this is a blockchain side, it's side chains, and then we'll uh, provide with a smart contract. At the lender side, and also uh, they have a wallet and then for lending and ether. This is uh, for blockchain uh, token. And then uh, for smart contract management also in uh, lender side. And then also this is the block with Ethereum or Solidity programming. This is uh, platform or component need to uh, develop some lending platform. How about the conclusion? The weaknesses uh, of the traditional lending platform, as we know, this is not scalable and not cost effective, high cost or not transparent, not auto uh, auditable and not automatic, slow, not secure. This is uh, the big problem as a traditional lending system. Next, in existing lending platform also, this is still require a, some collateral if I try to propose some loans. And then uh, we propose a new approach uh, to lending platform based on the trustworthiness score as a credit scoring with variables, personal data, financial data, social media data, and personality factor, guarantor, and collateral. That is development tools are blockchain supported. This is a uh, mine of the conclusion in my dev architecture. I think it's uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pak Wisnu Uriawan. Yes. Uh, this is very interesting uh, research in this case. And this application uh, is really something new or maybe uh, it has been already founded by uh, some other agent perhaps. Uh, let me make sure that uh, maybe some question will uh, come up yeah, from this uh, discussion. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Pa Vishnu Urawan has uh, told uh, a lot about the differences, especially in the research, uh, classical research, and within the new normal uh, condition. And this kind of application uh, could be well uh, utilized for the new normal condition. And especially those who want to borrow money and there must be a lot of people who would like to lend the money. Yes. And in the new normal, by this application, uh, do you think that we need, we still need uh, what we call collateral or something like that? Yes, yes, I think this is, uh, the problem is the collateral. <laughs> collateral, yes. yes. Okay. Yes, uh, well, uh, the audience, uh, once again, thank you very much for the presentation of Vishnu Rawan. I hope there are some uh, questions that uh, is raised uh, during this uh, discussion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I will uh, call up again uh, Professor Mihye Won and also Pak Vishnu, would you uh, remain there uh, to uh, accept uh, perhaps some question maybe raised by uh, some of the audience or else uh, if you do not have any question that uh, directly raised to the presenter, you can also put in the in the chat in this case. Otherwise, uh, you can also uh, give the question to the committee. Anyway, I think uh, we still have uh, a few more minutes uh, to give you the opportunity. Maybe you have some question. I think uh, we would like to give the opportunity. Okay, uh, in yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, there is a question in the chat, but I think this is for the uh, precious presenter. Yes. Yes. Well, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Anyway, uh, since there is no question, uh, will be raised. And uh, finally, we would like to give some uh, cheerful appreciation for both of you, Professor Mihye Won and also uh, Dr. Vishnu Uriawan. Yes. Once again, thank you very much for the nice presentation. I believe that you will have a question. Uh, but not uh, in this opportunity. Uh, it will be given to another time, perhaps through the committee. Yes. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much. And we will see you uh, soon in uh, sometime in the future. Well, okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. You are welcome. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I think uh, I will return this uh, program to the master of the ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Oh, thank you, Professor Gunnar Hadi, for being the moderator for the session of plenary lecture. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the end of plenary lecture session. Next on schedule will be the parallel session. But before closing, I will make a few announcements. So the parallel session will begin at 1 p.m. The room will be divided in eight rooms and here are the rules for the participant. So listen carefully. First, each presenter must be in the virtual room to record the session. Second, one presentation is allocated 12 minutes with nine minutes for the presentation and three minutes for the question and answer session. Presenter have to close the presentation strictly within 10 minutes. Third, session chair needs to strictly counter the start and closing time of each session. During your presentation, the session chair will give you notification via Zoom chat two times. So for the first notification, three minutes presentation time remaining, and the second notification time's over, finish your sentence and start your presentation. And the last is the question and answer session. Participants give question talk to chat that will be read by the chair or directly unmute your microphone. But please ask the chair's permission first. I think that's all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we give many thanks to all of our wonderful speakers. We thank every committee member for the wonderful accommodation. And we would like to apologize if you make mistakes in our wording. I, as your master of ceremony for this conference, will sign off. That's it for us. Thank you and see you in the next international conference on science education and technology. Stay safe, everyone. See you. Oh, <laughs>